history. Let's move on to our next slide. For the week, we are in the week of April 13th through the 17th. All right, so this one is called The Migration of a Negro, and this is panel number 49, and that's really important to make sure that you have that title down specifically. The artist's name is Jacob Lawrence. This is done from 1940 to 1941. The material is Cassian Tempera on hardboard. And what we just need to know first off is this is part of a series. There were 60 of these panels and how the artists have um, has these displayed um, actually has it displayed in two different museums. So this one in particular, this is number 49. All of the odd panels are in the collection. It's in Washington, D.C. It's called the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C. Those are the ones that are the odd numbers. And then the even ones are in the Museum of Modern uh, Modern Art in New York City. So the function of this and for basically for the series is to record a history of African Americans when in history books they were invisible to call attention to social justice. So just to kind of cover a little bit about some of the um, background uh, before we kind of get into discussing about the actual composition of this piece. So Jacob Lawrence thought of his works as parts of his own autobiography and I just wanted to make a comment. The con video that is kind of it, there's two con videos I made sure to put the longer version on it is really a good video because it actually goes through all 60 pieces rather quickly and it really gets into a full more um, holistic view of, of Jacob Lawrence so not just specifically focusing on this piece but more in the sense that it's part of a series and I think it's a really good video because it shows you all of the pieces and it really kind of gets through um, explaining where he's coming from so I just wanted to point that out to you guys so um, with this, he thinks that this is part of like his own autobiography. And basically, again, this series is going to deal with the hundreds and thousands of African Americans that moved from the rural South in the early 20s to, to the industrial North. So this is part of like the Great Migration. So African Americans are going to, again, move to the North, to the industrial cities um, in the North, hoping to escape some of the racism and violence of the South. The violence wasn't as intense in the North, but they still face terrible racism and discrimination more subtle racism in north so that's um i guess a little bit of uh a reason to maybe travel start thinking about moving powerfully expressed african-americans experienced with racism in the northern u.s and that's what his whole series is about as a child lawrence spent lots of his time in the harlem branch of a public library which he had collections of Afri African American art. He was influenced by art making, political statements, work by uh, Goya and Zamir, and also the Harlem Renaissance artists and writers. So we could, ooh, excuse me, we could clearly see some of those uh, attributes being. Um, formed here. So a little bit about the content. So what we see, we see, excuse me, keep going back to this one, um, is we see a clear division. Okay. We see two sides and they're just about symmetrically, vertically going down the center. We see one side with the whites and one side with the blacks. What's interesting is that the facial features on the whites you can clearly see, but on the right hand side where the blacks are, you can't you can't see any kind of facial recognition and it's basically just their silhouettes. They don't have faces. So it kind of seems that the whites uh, suggest the whites don't seem them as individuals. And just to make a comment, with this being part of a series, if you can kind of go back in your memory bank to um, the 19th century in the beginning when we were studying Hogarth in the, the, the Tete of, of Marriage a la Mode, that was also part of a series. So just to um, allude that that was, here's another series that we're looking at. So again, we see that this room is divided. 
down the center and it's like a velvet rope and I think that's actually going to help in the way of the movement of how your eye is going to kind of travel down to the bottom so it kind of it's interesting because it'll kind of like go from zigzagging from the left to the right to the left to the right and it kind of makes you see as it starts to kind of take those turns that there's um, a table placement in those specific spots so the fact that it uh, comments on the fact that even if it looks better, its function is just damaging. This um, extends to the north in general. The treatment of the blacks. It may not be as ugly on the surface, but underneath um, it's just as cruel. So again, he's just trying to show what the history books aren't really alluding to, to getting really into deep. So what we see here, uh, obviously, where we see the whites and the blacks and they're divided, we see segregation in the dining room. No interaction between the two sides. Um, Notice how the chairs are placed. It's almost like neither side of the, um, neither the direction of where the cha chairs are placed. It's like they make no any kind of um, interaction with the other side, and they're strategically placed so that it's almost like they don't even have to be paying attention to them. Their backs are turned. It's um, a clear division. The form, just to kind of continue on, just to get a little bit more of the aspect of this, it's flattened. If you look at all the particular figures themselves, they're angular. They're almost almost uh, considered to be silhouette, maybe more on the right-hand side. Almost like they look like they're cut out of construction paper. Lots of diagon very strong diagonal lines that we see, specifically going with the rope. Um, and it contrasts between the darks and the lights. Intentionally, it's simplified. Okay, so we don't see like anything else going on in the dining room, but we know that it is in a dining room because it has obviously tables. It's got table settings and we can you know, allude to it in that fact. Um, a comment that he made was, I wanted to create a work that was very sparse. Bold colors, expressive forms, rhythmic patterns. And I think you can clearly see that in the choice of colors, uh, very much showing the contrast, very much trying to make this be what our eyes go to first, especially with the way the line is being curved and zigzagged. And the fact of the color, it's yellow and it's against like the gray of the ground. And just keeping it simple, abstract, is what basically Lawrence uh, saw in African sculpture impacted. And he was also impacted uh, also by Picasso. Okay, so we're seeing some um, uh, influence. Includes nothing that is not essential to communicating the feeling of this experience. Stripped down to the bare essential. So when you're looking at this, you know this isn't um, a very positive scene going on. It doesn't have any cheerfulness to it. It and maybe we get that with the fact that we just we don't see any interaction between either side. And I think that's that's kind of where the artist was wanting to kind of just leave it as uh, to keep the paint. To keep the 60 paintings in the series unified visually, he applied one hue at a time to every painting, where it would appear requiring him to plan out all 60 paintings in detail at once. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing that he was able to um, continue on for all of his panels, is to make them all um, show unification by the color palettes. If you look at when you watch the video, you'll notice kind of a similar color palette with these particular muted colors. And then you have some of that bold, that yellow and the red uh, contrasting. You'll see these same colors kind of appear as his color palette. So um, again, this is called the Migration of a Negro panel number 49. And that's going to wrap us up for this particular slide. Over and out, Miss Howard.